Well, hello again sports fans. This is my latest attempt to get my FPV Raptor up and running as a uh, long duration flyer. My previous attempt ended abruptly with a controlled flight into terrain and I've uh, since managed to repair it and now I have to trim it up again. I've uh, upgraded the prop to a, an 8x6 slow fly prop because the uh, standard prop didn't have enough grunt to get the big 5200 milliamp hour battery up off the ground but uh, she seems to go quite nicely with the uh, 8x6. Despite having had to make some significant repairs to the elevator and uh, ailerons she's not too bad this time. It, needs a little bit of elevator trim and a little bit of aileron trim but all in all she's flying uh, reasonably smoothly for a uh, rebuilt plane. I'm running a Cyclops Tornado flight controller in this and the uh, protocol for, uh, for a new setup is to uh, take it up, trim the plane out so that it's flying uh, straight and level and then uh, land and there's a configuration in the flight controller that uh, allows you to tell it that the servos are now in their neutral positions. So I'll just fast forward through the next couple of minutes it's just doing circuits and making sure the trims are fine. Uh, as I said it didn't take too much trimming and once I was happy with it I uh, just brought her in for landing. So I'm very happy with the way she's flying now and uh, I bring her in for landing and that goes nice and smoothly and I um, get straight into accessing the uh, system configuration menu to um, centre the servos. So there's plenty of gas still left in the battery so I don't bother changing it out I'm just going to put it up again and test to see that all of the uh, flight controller functions are working as they should be. So once again the takeoff goes uh, nice and smoothly and I just put on a little bit of altitude before starting to flick the switches. So in addition to the uh, manual or pass-through mode, the Tornado provides four uh, assisted modes uh, which can be selected individually and the first one I'm testing here is loiter and this should keep the plane circling at a fixed altitude around the current GPS location. The radius and direction of the circle are configurable uh, in the menu and uh, it seems to be working fine. It's nice and stable, the altitude's being maintained, it's uh, doing it quite easily. Here I'm testing the pilot assist mode which uh, maintains the current altitude and heading until uh, new inputs are received by the sticks. This is the mode I'm most likely to use on my long range flights and it's good to see that it seems to be performing as it should be. The tornado allows you to program in a number of waypoints that are relative to the home position and switching to autopilot mode starts the plane navigating from one waypoint to the next and it will continue to circle them until you take it out of autopilot mode. I've programmed in three waypoints a, B and C and the next waypoint and the distance to it is being displayed down the bottom of the screen in countdown mode. So we're just about 100 metres from point A and we should see it switch to B very soon, which we do. So everything seems to be working well on the autopilot front as well. I go through the whole cycle but I'll just fast forward through it. You can set specific uh, altitudes for each of the waypoints. I don't tend to use it much but it's nice to know that it's working as it should. 
So next I test the return to home function which is pretty well self-explanatory and uh, as soon as I flick the switch the uh, plane turns around and starts heading for home and it should start circling when it gets there. I'll just fast forward uh, through it but once again it seems to be working as it should and I'm uh, very very happy. So everything seems to be going well, the plane's flying well, all the functions are working so I decide I'll bring her in and change over the battery and uh, try a longer range flight. So the main object of the exercise is to see how long I can keep the uh, Raptor up in the air on the 5200 milliamp hour battery. So I decide I'm going to fly up to the top of Mount Tennant and just uh, keep within a four or five kilometre radius uh, until the battery starts to run down. So I line up on Mount Tennant and uh, start putting on the uh, 800 uh, metres of altitude I'm going to need to uh, to get up to the top of it. But I'm trying to keep the uh, amp draw down to a reasonable level so it's a fairly slow trip. I'll just uh, fast forward through it. I was a bit concerned with that with the relatively slow rate of climb I wasn't going to be able to clear the foothills of the mountain so I decided to uh, fly straight across the valley to the uh, ridge that you can see ahead which is much lower and uh, get over the top of that and then turn left and gradually fly up to the top of the mountain from there. From me memory this ridge is about 400 meters so that's the altitude I'm aiming for. I didn't notice this at the time but since reviewing the video I've noticed that the GPS has actually dropped out here for a few uh, seconds and it happens a couple of times on the flight on the way up. Uh, I'm guessing the cable may have been jarred loose in the crash the other day but I just don't know and I'm not sure whether it affected the outcome of this flight or not. So at this point I'm uh, navigating down the valley just to uh, try and make sure that I've got enough altitude uh, before I start approaching the, uh, the ridge. So I'm getting near my target 400 metres altitude. Uh, at this point the GPS uh, goes on the blink briefly again. As I said I didn't notice it at the time but it comes back fairly quickly. So I've got my 400 metres of altitude and I turn uh, back towards the uh, ridge. I start having some difficulty in distinguishing the details on the ground from the uh, picture on the monitor. It's quite dark and I'm uh, thinking about uh, adjusting the brightness uh, settings on the uh, monitor. I start navigating towards some uh, exposed rock faces which I can see a bit more clearly than the trees but uh, around about this time I start getting a little bit of uh, interference on the monitor and very very quickly the picture just uh, drops out completely. I have a quick jiggle of the antenna which doesn't help and then I flick the return to home switch. So 10 minutes later there's been no improvement in the video, the plane hasn't come back so I can only assume that it continued on towards that ridge which was obviously higher than the 400 metres that I thought it was. This is the last clear video frame that was sent back and it gives the uh, coordinates which are obviously pretty close to just before it must have hit. It's in a particularly inaccessible part of the uh, range as you can see from this graphic from Google Earth. 
I was able to follow an old track around the base of the ridge to within about two kilometres of the spot, but um, it's a very rough and steep piece of territory and I uh, don't hold out much hope of being able to get close to it. I did have a uh, GPS locator beacon on board, but uh, I haven't been able to pick up a signal from it, so I can only assume it was damaged in the uh, crash. So without coordinates, I don't think I'll even bother attempting to uh, climb up the side of that ridge and find it. So as far as uh, FPV Raptors are concerned, the score so far is Mountain 3, Ken 0. I think I might send the Texumo out on an aerial mission to see if we can see anything from the air, but uh, I don't even hold out much hope for that.